I, I really need to step up my duck game. I think this being the year of the Green Heron. Welcome everybody to episode 11 of the Feathery Treasury Show. My name is Aaron, and as always, I'm joined with Alex. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm doing great, thanks. It's a long time since last recording. Yeah, Good. we had a little bit of holiday sabbatical, I guess you could call it. Yeah, it was a cold winter, but we're back, ready to go. Yeah, um, so we can, uh, we got a lot to go over today, because this is our first episode of the year, so we're going to go over kind of our final numbers for last year, did we meet our goals, um, we went for a walk today, so we'll go over that walk beforehand, kind of started slow but got pretty exciting it did yeah so what was your final numbers then last year what yeah um so last year my goal was to hit 100 for the year um went well past that got 127 uh, mostly due to my pennsylvania trip where i went to pennsylvania new jersey uh maryland and delaware um, yeah you saw got, a lot out there yeah 52 different species i went back and looked um 15 of those were lifers yeah, that's um, a good record. Yeah, in, in which 2003, 2023, excuse me, uh, total lifers, I got 30 new lifers last year. Which So uh, half of them were half just of that. Them were just that one trip, yeah. How about you? What was your, uh, your yeah. last year's number looking like? Yeah, I don't think I had a specific goal for amount of birds. I think I kept it a bit more low key, but. Um ended up seeing 132 nice so you beat me by five got, right. got that yeah i think the the uk trip was the big one um yeah. same with the life as thanks to that and you know being new to ebird means i'm always gonna have That's the odds in my favor yeah, but yeah. 69 very nice 69 lifers last year nice, nice. Uh, and yeah 62 birds i think in the uk and all 62 were there for wow, lifers yeah. um and yeah my highlight has to be has to be the trip i think lot of different moments that were special but sitting in one of the bird hides and watching all the different tits and the bullfinches kind of these feeders and then it just went quiet as the old skidded away and then the eurasian sparrowhawk swooping in and uh seeing a bird of prey up close which until today was the closest i'd seen a bird of prey yeah was uh was was a special moment especially as we'd sat for be 20 30 minutes just watching yeah to see that was, you know it's always fun to see different birds doing their behaviors um which, yeah it was how joyful they all were kind of like the chickadees are here with right. all those kind of fluttering in and then just nothing right yeah and then to see the the hawk come in and and do its thing it's just it's always fun to see um so yeah we'll go over our walk today and then we uh we did a little trip a couple weeks ago we'll go over that then after that um which was pretty exciting and then we'll top it off uh our 2024 goals and then We'll I'll see, make we'll it. I'll make hit those. I'll make a list. I'll make a dedicated number this time. Maybe. Yeah. All right. So for our walk today, um, we went to a park that we had gone to before a different episode. Uh, it's where we saw the orange crowned warbler for the first time. Both of us. That was a lifer for both of us. That was like the last trip we did. I think before the end of the, before so. that think was think our that last was podcast. Our last podcast. Yeah. So a couple weeks ago, I had gone to this park. It's really close to my place. And I saw a great horned owl and talking to some people that were there taking pictures of it. They were saying how it's always there. There's a nesting pair that's right in this park, always kind of right in the same spot. So I thought, oh, perfect. I can take you to see it. Yep, um, I've not seen one. Yeah, we'll get that off your lifer list. So I was like, perfect. It's right by my place. Go see this owl. I always like to see the owls too. So no complaints from me. Um, it's cold. It's cold. Yeah, a little brisk. It's about mid upper 20s, I think, by the time we got there this morning. Um, so we park. I kind of park close to where I know the owl's at. We're walking for maybe 15, 20 seconds, and Nelson's big gray bird kind of flew past in front of us. It was like of, swooping was very bobbing. strangely. Yeah, yeah, it was weird bobbing. We, at first, I thought it's kind of the size of a, a blue jay, but it's not blue. Also, it's bobbing. Blue jays don't fly like that. Thankfully, it kind of landed in a tree a little ways away from us, um, but it was viewable close enough to see the, yeah, the so distinguishing you, you marks. Through your and I, I got a, a decent enough picture in my camera it was a northern strike lifer um, which was a lifer for you it was almost a lifer for me i saw one earlier this year uh mid-january was saw it that park too different park different park yeah um so but it was a nice it was a second time i've seen it so basically a lifer um always, was it, was always fun to see a, a different bird it was a promising start, too. Yeah. When you got that in the back pocket, it means no matter what. You're, right you're right away, we were like, okay, this is a successful walk, no matter what we see. Which wasn't um, much. Yeah, and so this park, the way the trail's set up is it's like a big loop. 
Um, so that was kind of right at the start of where we got onto the loop. And uh, the owl, the owl area was, you know, a little ways ahead of that. So we got up there, looked and looked, couldn't see a thing. There's no, a couple of squirrels. A couple of squirrels. No, nothing. Not even chickadees or anything like that. No owls. The sun was blocking a yeah, good the, chunk the, of the sky too. The sun was low in the sky. It was hard to see different angles. So we're all right. I guess you know, can't win them all. We'll move on. Maybe we come back another day and hopefully it's there. Um, so we move on. Eventually the trail gets to where the lake's at. A uh, bunch of Canadian geese. I think we counted like 44, 45, something yeah, like they that. Yeah, were, they were honking around. Yeah, a couple mallards um, in the lake. And then we later on, then we saw a bunch of mallards fly overhead. Yeah. Um, and then... It was a bald continuing eagle. Continuing on, yeah, saw a bald eagle. Um, that was nice. He briefly saw him. He, he kept moving. He didn't stick around. He flew past. So we get back kind of where we're parked. We're kind of finishing up the loop, and you're like, well, let's, it's not that far to go see the owl. Give it well, another go. You never just, know. Yeah, you never, never know. know. Let's give it another go. So we're walking. See a couple downy woodpeckers that weren't there before, which was nice. Nice treat. Yeah. Um, give up to this little shelter house that we were looking for the owl through before. Um, yeah, you you were in it looking around. Yeah, and standing there looking, and all of a sudden I look up, and oh, there it is. It's just sitting in a tree kind of right across this little clearing. Um, we're thinking the sunlight was just, we weren't looking that way because it just hurt to look. Yeah. Um, but now the the sun was high enough. We could see it. He's just sitting there sleeping, kind of facing facing us. Nice. Tiny branch, too. Just yeah, a little tiny branch just kind of right up against the tree. Um, so got a good look at it, got some good pictures. Shared it with other people, too. Yeah, a couple, couple people forward. walking past. Another lady with a giant camera. Um, I guess she had seen this out before. She kind of pointed out to us where the nest is. Yeah, which so. is nice. So if we ever go back, we kind of know where to look. Um, but yeah, it was nice. It was a lifer for you. Life for me. Yep. I think it's fourth or fifth time I've seen a, a great horned owl. I don't know if I specified that. It was a great yeah. horned owl. Was it the closest we it was for you? Uh, not the closest, but the best view of one. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, you could see this whole nice, nice whole body view of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so pretty successful. And so we were standing there, all excited. Finally saw the owl. It was worth the walk back. And then we see this hawk kind of swoop past. Um, it, I must have been sitting on the ground, or I don't know where he was, but all of a sudden he was flying. And then kind of saw back a ways on the trail, kind of where he landed in these branches. So we walked back that way. Got some really good looks at it. It was a nice Cooper's hawk. Yep, um, we, we looked at pictures of that one and the... Yeah, and the, the sharp-shinned hawk. Yep. We kind of went back and forth on it, but we got a good look at its eye. Its eye was nice and red, um, which the sharp shin looked a little more yellow from the pictures we were looking at. And it wasn't moving around. He didn't no, seem to be bothered by us. But sat it's... there on a branch. So I got some really good pictures of it. You got some good looks at it. Yeah. And he was kind of twisting his head around. Looking up, looking down, looking yeah, around. Yeah, either looking or listening or doing something. But, yeah, he sat there. I mean, he was still there when we left. We kind of, we saw all we could see. And yeah. And decided to kind of move on. But I feel like with was, the, uh... them and the red-tailed, and so you see him on the highway, but it was nice to see it in the proper habitat. Right. Where it was yeah. in the woods, and it was not just, you know. Pretty neat. Um, which by. I looked it up but I, I officially saw Coopers back in 2016 so first one in like 8 years so it feels like a lifer it was a lifer for yeah, you yeah definitely first time I've tracked one so yeah, yeah. that was 3 lifers on a trip where we didn't really expect to see Yeah, we were hopeful of an owl but I wasn't you started know. off you know, with a bang with the shrike but then kind of slowed down and then kind of ended on a bang which yeah. was a nice, nice successful walk which uh, won't complain especially for just a pre-pod walk which usually aren't too fruitful every once in a while. It was not a big trip. No. So, yeah, to get to our big trip, uh, I guess what, almost two weeks ago now, we decided, you know, we're living in the Twin Cities, just up the road, you know, two hours, 45 minutes away <laughs> is uh, kind of a world-famous area for owl sightings and other boreal birds. It's the uh, Sax Zim Bog. Referenced in the movie The Big, yeah? yeah. Owen Wilson goes up there trying That's to look true. for a snowy owl. Yeah. Oh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we decided, you know, we've got this this great area that's known for birding. It's right, it's not that far away. We could do a day trip. You know, it's kind of a waste not to go up there. Um, we figured we could do now to go see winter birds. We can always go back up then in the summer. We'll know our way around better. Yeah, um, it, was, it was to get check it out, get a kind of feel yeah. for the place, and then... When things are dead, you will get a better idea of what's there. So right. then we know when it's nicer out, what 
go go back up in the summer, be able to do some evening checks for uh, different owls and all that, and maybe there's different stuff up there in the summer. Um, so we didn't go up with like too high of hopes of what we were gonna see. Maybe um, an owl. Maybe I think an owl. Was or an two. owl yeah, or was, boreal chickadee was maybe. It was just a, an excuse to go for a little trip, get out of the house. Yeah. Um, just maybe go see a couple couple birds. Um, but yeah, we started off. We we went straight to the visitor center because you know we didn't know our way around up there. It's a pretty big area. You have to drive to these different locations. Yeah, um, it, I had downloaded a PDF map on my phone, which was okay to reference. But we it was to, a strange map, but yeah. we used we used it as best we could. It was right. interesting because we, we went to the visitor center hoping there'd be a paper copy, which there was a nice big paper copy, which made it a lot easier to navigate. Um, Did we get there around eight? Was a bit yeah, it was like eight, eight thirty, something like that. It was really cold. It, yeah, I don't think we've had we got how there cold it was. It was like seven degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Yeah, um, it, was it was like, like a, a high of twenty that day, but I think by the time we left, it was only fifteen. Yeah, it was it was brisk, and we took a walk around this boardwalk, and it was so yeah. cold. I all I yeah, think the, about the was the boardwalk at the visitor center was. That was, uh, I was starting to regret things during that walk. Yeah, my fingers, all I think was my fingers are frozen. <laughs> These gloves aren't good enough. We were, felt not prepared, but yeah. there was some feeders there. Yeah, they had a bunch of feeders set up at the visitor center. And uh, right off the bat, kind of as soon as we got out of the car, we saw our first first bird and the first lifer of the, the trip. It was a bunch of common red poles. Yeah, the cute birds. Yeah, very cute. They kind of reminded me of uh, like goldfinches. Um, yeah. Obviously different colors. Um, but just the size and the behavior was very similar. Yeah, there was them and chickadees mainly yeah, were kind which, of... which makes sense. I looked up red poles are in the finch family, so they're oh, okay. goldfinch and them. They're close, closely related. Yeah, it was um, it was exciting. Uh, we, yeah, we, we, were, we counted how many we had. We and then super excited. And... We went to quite a few other places after that, and it became sort of, let's count them to their present. It's yeah, definitely, it's... they are common. They are common. But... Yeah, the novelty wore off pretty quick. They were, <laughs> we saw at least a hundred, couple hundred probably. Had to it done, was yeah. just, They were everywhere. Um, which, you know, it's good to see. It's good yeah. to see something new, but it kind of felt bad to kind of get bored of a lifer that quick. Yeah, we we never we've decided on the trip. We learned that we're never happy. No, like it was like oh, something else we could want. We saw Zala, it's great, but we didn't see this, and it's yeah. it's uh, it's a bit addicting, really. But yeah, so finished up at the visitor center, kind of took a look at the map, gave a kind of came up with a rough plan of the different spots we were gonna hit. We did like two loops, I think, in the end. Yeah, yeah. so the um kind of amongst this park, there's it's crisscrossed with roads because it's not like a self-contained. Park. It's more of like a nature area, and um, it, and it's a bog, so it's hard to really yeah so walk around a bog. They've got these little bird feeder stations kind of set up by the road, um, so you would kind of park and and watch the feeders, um, which were mostly common red poles that we saw. A lot of black capped chickadees. Yeah, no boreal chickadees. No boreal, which that was kind of one of our goals going into it was ooh boreal chickadee would kind of be nice to see. Um, because we, yeah. we did, I think we did we did a full loop of it and didn't really see anything. And then our second time we did the loop, we at least saw a few more wood, uh, just regular woodpeckers, yeah, like there there some, were, there downies some downies and harries, and harries kind of hanging out these squirrels feeders. knocking around. The feeders were a little lackluster as far as birds go, besides the red poles. Um, I think the first highlight was probably uh, when we were on the main road and we saw something gliding in the sky. That's true. It kind of flew overhead, and we thought we kind of came to the conclusion that it was a rough-legged hawk, but that was you looking up things as i was driving yeah just got a glimpse of it sort of like but then you know, when we stopped we saw it hovering and that was yeah, something yeah. you'd saw was a distinct rough-legged hawk yeah, tree so, yeah we stopped at the one spot and we saw it kind of hover above the field and which i'm not exaggerating i mean it like stayed still yeah which partially i think helped that it was really windy that day <laughs> um so they kind of lined themselves up but that was kind of cool that was kind of as i was saying earlier when you see a be certain behavior of a bird um, that's kind of unique to them, especially the birds of prey. It's like you got to yeah, identify it's just, the it's movement. It's really or... fun to see um, something different, not just a different bird, but different behavior. And that was life for you and it was life for me life and life for you. We ended up seeing five or six of them, I think, over the course of the day. Yep. At one point, there was one coming down the road, kind of right above the road. I pulled over, and it it kind of hovered right above us. Yeah, um, I could see which it. Was really neat. I got some good pictures from underneath. He was kind of looking down right at us. Yeah, it was the lowest one I think of all these because the ones are quite high up. And yeah. when we first saw them, the sky was very it was very overcast, so it was hard to get the colors. But I think it cleared up a little bit, so it was a bit more blue sky, and it made a better contrast. It was just nice that like it was almost like he was posing for us. He just kind of yeah. sat right in the right right on top of us. 
Um, what else did we see? Here? But it was it was it was quiet. Like these boardwalks were they were nice yeah. to walk. But it was cool, but again, um, there was one where the chickadees and red poles are really close. You got some great yeah, pictures they, of a they chickadee. Had feeders kind of right along this boardwalk, and so they didn't even care that we were there. They were probably so used to people at this point. But it was when we were driving past the place marked as the greenhouse. Yeah, which we were debating earlier if it was a greenhouse for plants or if it was just the house painted green. Yeah, well, it was, the, the map was strange, let's the, say. The map didn't specify, but it was it was greenhouses for plants. Um, and there was two or three cars parked, and there was yeah. guys with big scopes. So we're like, all right, right something, something's here. Um, yeah. And uh, kind of across the road from the greenhouse, on top of just the tippy top of a pine tree was sitting... It wasn't owl. even a big pine tree. It was no. a small, it was like a, like a almost like a baby pine tree. Right. Um, but it was just like just sitting on the tippy top it kind of looked you know top heavy um was an owl sitting there so we pulled over got out got some good looks at it really cool owl it's striking details um the the face was was really neat um it was a northern hawk owl lifer for both of us for both of us yeah and we saw it swoop across the road too and got even closer landed closer to us on the other side of the road than but it was that was kind of the point where we're like, all right, this trip was worth it. Yeah, uh, the we red, were. The red pole was a cool lifer, but the rough hog, the rough legged hawk was a cool lifer. But this is kind of what we came up here for. Yeah, owl like sight an owl. and close yeah. up, and it was head turning and pivoting around. Yeah, it, was... it was really neat. And just a, such a cool looking owl too. Yeah, and then we drove further down that road yeah. again. Saw those rough legged hawks. Talked about hovering low, and yeah, then there yeah. was some more cars parked up on a bend, and it yeah, was you, Aaron, that there's, saw it. There's something here. So yeah, we. I kind of looked looked past the people kind of where they were looking i you know i couldn't see anything in the trees and then kind of out in this field there was oh, which i should say there wasn't much snow up there it hasn't been very snowy in minnesota i think snow would be an exaggeration of what it was like a little patch of yeah. ice so like there ice was slush there was like a white icy slush kind of in the shadow of these trees i hadn't melted yet from the warm days um and there's just a snowy owl just thinking it was camouflaged i guess just sitting yeah. there in the snow it was perched like a cat perch is where it just yeah, sits and just watches. on the ground just sitting in the snow um but yeah that was that was a lifer for you lifer for me yes i, I, saw, was two I saw hours. one back in like 2017 but it's the second time i've seen it so it felt like another lifer yeah um but yeah that, that kind of was the the nice little exclamation point on the trip it was but it was just by the highway like we were checking when every boardwalk we were looking at the trees thinking maybe yeah there's an owl perched in a branch a bit like today like there's gonna be one when we were looking everywhere and yeah. then it turns out there's one just sitting in a field and one perched on top of a tree that was way too uh, it was too heavy for yeah so i think at that point we had like one more one or two more stops on our plan we were we pretty did. satisfied i think at that point if we had gone home we would have been pretty happy with everything it was the boreal chickadee that was the one we were yeah, thinking we, maybe we'll see a boreal like, we're, we're looking really at every see that. we're looking at every black cap chickadee scene is that and we'd see a bit of brown on them but it was just like their wing or something it was that was... yeah so we go to this last stop it's kind of a longer boardwalk relative to the other boardwalks none of them were all that long um we're walking we see a couple of downies there was a couple of harries on the downies was making interesting noise too there was yeah um, so we, we were watching them for a bit, and then we kind of got out to the far loop of the, the um, boardwalk, and all of a sudden I look over and I see this uh, black woodpecker kind of going at this tree, kind of at eye level. Yeah, it was quite low down. Over. Yeah, so we got some really good pictures of it, and uh, we did, you know, cursory research before we went up there, so we knew it was We're either, professionals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We knew it was either a black-backed woodpecker or a three-toed woodpecker. Um, those are the two up there. If it had been a male, it would have been pretty easy to figure out, um, just because of the way they have the yellow on their head. Mm. Uh, but it was a female, and got some good pictures of it. Pulled up uh, the Audubon app to just kind of look at pictures, and we determined it was a black-backed woodpecker. Yeah, um, it was. It was an easy confirmation. Yeah, the, the three-toed, the, the females, they have a, quite a bit of white barring on their back, um, and this was just completely black on its back, which you know makes sense for the name. And we got to, there was some other people walking around. We got to point it out. They were very excited. Oh, yeah, that felt good. Um, After stealing were, the owl glory off other people, yeah, it was yeah, nice to point it out. They were pretty excited about that. So, yeah, it was, that was like the second exclamation point on it. It was, it was really good to see that. So, all totaled, you had five lifers. Yep, five I, lifers. I had four lifers plus the snowy owl as a little bonus. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a nice way to kind of start off the year, a nice day trip. Concert, yeah, I think it was definitely better than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, um, for sure. And now we know our way around up there. Yeah. Um, we can go back up kind of summertime, 
see some different stuff kind of know the good spots to go there was a few places where you could tell in the summer when the bog's more in bloom and everything yeah, yeah for There'd sure be, you could believe because it talked because it was a board that said oh you know in the summer you can see this and this and all these weirder birds and it's like yeah i can believe it yeah which that was the nice part about the map is it kind of highlighted different sections of the road um and, and we either marked them as like winter summer or like year-round areas so we only hit the, the winter and year-round areas yep there's several spots that were marked for summer we didn't bother um we'll go back up at some point this summer and, and check those out for sure and i think so, there'll be more birders too so in theory yeah. if there is an owl someone else might have seen it we can piggyback for on sure. that again for sure um but yeah successful trip um pretty excited to to do that it's kind of right in our backyard relatively speaking um and i think there'll be place on the way there too and also if it did uh, there's also a uh, jay cook state park which isn't yeah. too far away which i've been to and i think you've went to yeah and uh i saw scarlet tannages there mm -hmm. i think so and we could always do like the north shore too kind of right past duluth there it's all kind of it's right all, all up in that area and we we already kind of decided if we go back this summer we'll get a hotel room or something um, make, 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 make a, a couple day, days out of it um which i mean it's not that bad of a drive but it's enough of a drive where it's like all right it's and the more time you have that the more time. burden we can do exactly I mean, we can do more early morning or late night for the owls exactly so what's uh what what's your 2024 goal yeah so we kind of already we did a lot this year so far so it feels weird to kind of set a goal now but I, I adjusted my uh my goals accordingly yeah what, so, was, what did you start with yeah so i so i have a couple goals for the year uh, the first is that I want to log at least the same number of species as I did last year, so 127. I think if I could surpass that, that'd be nice. Especially, you know, I don't have a, a trip out to Pennsylvania planned, you know, for all the shorebirds and stuff. Hmm. Um, but I do have one trip that's probably going to happen. I'm going to be going to Colorado in September, most likely. That'd be nice, all the ones yeah. that don't kind of get this far east. Or... So yeah, some western birds, probably some elevation, so there might be some, some variety there. But I think between that and between, you know, more dedicated trips in within Minnesota or even over into, like, Wisconsin or anything like that, I think I should be able to get that goal. I think, uh, I think so. I think last, last year was pretty busy, so I didn't do a lot of dedicated birding trips, you know, on the weekends. Um, so I th I'm pretty, I'm pretty help hopeful. And you're already at a head start, right, so yeah, far? Yeah, so far this year, I, you know, I've checked off a lot of the easy ones. January... Every time I took Eugene for a walk, I was just running a checklist at yeah. my park by my place. Um, so I've, I've checked off a lot of the easy ones. I have mallards, crows, black-capped chickadees, cardinals, etc. Yep. Um, one notable highlight, which was nice, was back in, I think, mid-January, there was an American widgeon. Oh, wow. It was a female. It was just hanging out with all the mallards at my local park. Um, it was kind of... eBird, you know, said it was rare for the time of year and stuff, so it was kind of nice to... Did you to, clock to it right clock away? Out. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's different. Um, yeah. I saw them two days in a row. I was hoping to, you know, keep seeing them. But then we got that really cold spell um, where it dropped down to, like, negative 10 or whatever. And the lake completely froze over. All the ducks left. And then now the mallards are back, but the American widgeon never came back. It's been a it's been a weird start to the year. There's a lot of yeah. where there'll just be a few days where it'll freeze again and it puts everything off, but it's not it's been mild. Like right. we've been able to do more walks. We got I that think. one decent snowstorm a couple weeks ago, but then it all melted by now. Yep. Um so yeah, it was it was neat to see it. Kinda of sad it didn't stick around longer. Um kind of bad timing as far as the weather went. Um but all totaled I've already got forty um between today, the Saxon bog trip and just regular bird watching so you're already just Mario. about a third of the way yeah but unfortunately a lot of those are the easy ones uh, yeah so it's, it's gonna slow down i'm hoping springtime with the migration try to get out see some warblers i was gonna say war if we could identify warblers we'd be we'd be set yeah um so yeah i, th I think i think that's achievable and so then i kind of set a second goal for myself i figured you know up the ante a little bit um because I wanted to reach 200 lifers this year. That was kind of in my mind last year. That was my goal for this year. But after the Saxon bog trip, I'm already up to 196. So it, you know, it feels kind of cheap to four be like more. only four more for the whole year. Um, and with the Colorado trip, you know, I would think a lot of those will be lifers. Um, it, 200 just seems too doable. So I'm, I'm going to bump it up to 215. 
So that I need to do was a nineteen. That seems feasible. I think with nineteen lifers. Colorado, you could easily hit me at maybe five ten. You would think, yeah. And then again, if we if we hear about a good trip north, or I know we talk about the burrowing owl, owl, owls. Yeah, I, I do want to burrowing owls. They're not kind of an area we'd have to kind of go over to the Minnesota South Dakota border. I think would be the closest spot for them. Um, so you never know. But then, yeah. what else could be there on the trip? So. Yeah, so that might be one of our one of our dedicated bird trips. So that's kind of another goal of ours, I guess, that we could share. Is we want to be we're going to be owl heavy, owl heavy, owl heavy, uh, owl heavy the year year of the owl. And, and doing more like day trips, kind of in our area, going a little further out than what we usually do. Um, which we're blessed with a lot of state parks. Yeah, Minnesota. a lot of state parks in Minnesota is nice. It's got you know the forest up north, but if you go southwest, it's more prairie. So it's We've got a lot of opportunity to to see some different stuff. Even some of the st- in a single state park, you can exactly, get different habitats. Yeah. And lot, all the lakes and everything. So, I think two fifteen is doable, um, and I'm excited to get to it. Yeah. What about you? What are your goals for the year? Yeah, I think last year with the UK trip did. I think it'll be hard to meet, like kind of like you, to meet the exact same number. Um, the year before then, I saw 90 species. Okay. So I think, again, sighting over 100 would be, an, you know, it would be an achievable goal because you think I saw 132 with the UK trip. Right. So to see 100 again would mean yeah. I'd have to find 50, 60 birds that I didn't yeah. see this year. For sure. Um, but I'm already at 25. Last year, at this time, I was at 5. Yeah. So I'm already 20 ahead. You know, it's not as good as 40, but it's... Uh, yeah. I mean, between our walk today and the, the trip, that got you quite a few. Yeah, well, life which, is alone, yeah. Um, which is, that's the nice part of a mild winter, is you can get out more and, and see some stuff early on. Yeah, I think life-wise, I'm at 168, which okay. again, that's with the five from Saxonburg, another three today, right. so it's going up. So getting to 200, I think, would be a... A difficult i think it'd be a difficult one yeah but i mean last year i went from you know 160 to 190 something all in one year so true it's doable um and i've got the fortune of because i'm new at eba there is some true. common ones like i technically haven't seen a barred owl even though i know i have right um the sharp shinned hawk yeah there's there's quite a lot of warblers that i haven't seen which i think i know you saw last year so i know mm. they're here or can be here so i think I think my main goal, kind of like you, is be more proactive with bird trips right. um, and kind of keep working on identifying the birds. Um, with spring migration, if we're if I'm dedicated to it, I think the I think I can hit a 200 if I'm putting the effort. Um, you know, if there's something, if someone sees some sightings online of a rare bird a few hours away, we know with the Saxon bog trip, it's worth making that effort. Yeah. Um, even on a quiet day, we saw quite a few lifers. Um, so yeah, though I won't have the same easy time that i did in the uk where you know just standing outside i see four different types of crow um, <laughs> right. i think there's uh there's some success we could have uh traveling around minnesota on the weekend or across the border uh just take some time and a bit of patience i think yeah and i think this is you know we started the podcast kind of to document our uh our journey into you know amateur bird watching um i know i had a little more background in it than you did but i think this is kind of the natural progression um, of what we wanted to do, which was kind of get into it and then really dive deep into it. Um, yeah. And I think we're kind of reaching that point where we're we're, we're taking the next step. We're wanting more. Like yeah. we we drove two and a half hours, well five hours total to, yeah, to it was worth check it. something out, and that was in a imagine how nice how many things we'll see if it was in the spring and we can hear different birds because it was exactly. so quiet. Um, I think we got some. I think we got a good time. I think we'll both hit it. I mean, we'll both hit 200. Yeah, I mean, that would be well, nice. You, you yeah. should. If you I don't, should. then If, if then I don't, I, I wrong. did something wrong, yeah, for sure. But I, I think you could do it. Um, yeah, I think, you know, a little more a little more proactive, a little more dedicated um, to the little weekend trips, and I think it's possible. The Duluth area especially. Yeah. There's a lot going yeah, on that, there. And, and just paying attention to eBird checklist about what's being seen around us and my wife's on all the facebook groups of different bird and things and she's like oh there was a you know a shovel of scene here it's like well maybe next time all right let's let's get on the road yeah check it out all right well i think we had kind of a packed episode um so we're not going to do a bird away the episode this week or this episode again um we'll get back to them eventually but we had a lot for, fe- for february too again last year i think or the year yeah. before we saw what a couple of red-tailed hawks and some cardinals like, yep that's what we saw yeah i think last year 
for our February recording, we had to watch a movie and recap it yeah. to, to fill out the episode. So it feels nice to actually be able to talk about birds uh, this time around. Birds we've seen. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for us. Uh, thanks, Alex, for joining me. My pleasure. And uh, like I always say, feel free to email into the show, feathertreasury at gmail.com. If you got any questions or any birding stories you want to share on the air, we'll read them out. Um, but yeah, have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.